Hey, BGC family, it's Minister Tiffany here, and I am here to share the good news that there is future after failure. Our passage today comes from 1 John, 1st chapter 7th through the 10th verse, and it reads, But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, His Son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim that we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and his word is not in us. The start for Sammy Perez was a rocky one. His dad was murdered. His mother suffered with mental illness. And at the age of two, he was already being shuttled to and from family members' homes. When he was only eight, he was first arrested. And at the age of 11, his mom surrendered him to social services. It was at this time that he was introduced to a life of violence and drugs. And in 2005, he was sentenced to 10 years in prison. What could have been his greatest failure was just his beginning. Because when he got to prison, his cellmate shared the gospel, and Perez surrendered his wife to Christ. And when he was released, he got married, he had four children, and earned a bachelor's degree in psychology and a master's in counseling. He went and volunteered for the Prisoner's Fellowship Second Chance Program, where he now works mobilizing Christians who are striving for restorative justice. While society may define us as failures, Perez believes we've all come to faith the same way, as sinners saved by grace. And that's the message of the passage that John shares with us today. It's the heart of the gospel and that while we have all been imprisoned under the bondage of sin, we received a death sentence, but Jesus came and died and bled and cleansed us from all of our sins, releasing us from our shackles and pronouncing us once and for all not guilty. And all we have to do to walk into our freedom is to confess. But if we don't confess our sins, if we deny them or say that we've been falsely accused, not only do we forfeit our gift of forgiveness, but we deny the truth of the gospel and call God a liar. And as my grandmother would say, and I think John knew her, the truth ain't in you. But for those of us who have received the gift of forgiveness, we are called to walk in the light, to walk in the light and fellowship means that we don't just profess and believe the gospel, but we share it with others who are still under the bondage of their past, of the guilt and the shame, to let them know they don't have to be defined by their failures anymore. When we don't share the gospel, we leave them in a form of solitary confinement. We leave them subject and vulnerable to the attacks of the enemy where our minds start playing tricks on them. We believe the lie that somehow what we've done defines us or disqualifies us from this gift of forgiveness. We believe the lie that somehow our ability to be forgiven is based on our merit and not God's favor and His love. So it's interesting because God has a long track record of using people who we consider failures. He used a woman by the name of Hagar, who was bound by her status as a handmaid and birthed a nation from her. He used a man by the name of Moses, who was a murderer, bound by guilt, and used him to lead his people out of bondage and through the wilderness. He used a woman by the name of Rahab, who was bound by her profession as a prostitute, and she hid the two spies in Jericho, and he placed her in the lineage of Jesus. He used Peter, who was bound by shame for denying Jesus three times, and he built his church upon him. And he used a brother by the name of Saul, 
who was bound by pride and false doctrine and persecuted the church and murdered believers. And he changed his name to Paul and he used him to plant churches and convert souls throughout all Asia and to write half the New Testament. Beloved, the things that we think disqualify us are in fact the very things that do qualify us to be used by God. And that's good news. So how do we share that good news with others? First, you gotta tell your story. The world is in desperate need of believers like you and me who will admit and be transparent and say, we don't have it all together. We are all works in progress. And God took our mistakes and our failures and the broken pieces of our lives and put us back together and gave us a new future in Him. We need to tell someone that Jesus' love is deep enough and strong enough to reach them wherever they are bound and to release them in the future that He has for them. We need to let them know that no matter who they are, no matter what they've done, that God doesn't see them as a failure, but His beloved child. And just as He gave us a new future, He can do the same thing for them. You gotta tell your story. And secondly, Practice forgiveness. When we forgive our enemies, and maybe especially our enemies, we imitate Jesus' love that He poured for out for us on the cross. And that's why forgiveness is not just for the people that we like, or the people that look like us, or the people that we think deserve it. It's for everyone. Everyone needs to know that God doesn't define us by what we do. When you practice forgiveness, God could use you to usher someone into their future and to rewrite their story. And what a wonderful gift to a partnership with God to help someone regain their freedom. That's our Lenin devotion for today, beloved. Will you go and tell your story and help someone get their future in Christ?